Hello, this is Wisdom Hunter with another video from Barbaric Fantasy Homebrews. So today we're going to be talking about Overland Hex Maps. Now traveling across the world, exploring is a wonderful part of the game. But the question is, is how can you use hexes appropriately and have it fun so that it makes sense and all that, right? So let me show you my homebrew. And from what I've heard, no one has ever seen this before. So I wanted to make a video about it and so put it out there so that people know this exists. All right, let's get started. So first, let's look at the size of the Overland hex map. First of all, when you put on a world map, don't put hexes on it. You don't want to clutter it up with a lot of hexes. Just put up a world map because it's just for general reference for the whole world. You don't want hexes on there. And you're not going to be using it for like daily travel, measuring things like that. So just give rough estimates of how far it is from one place to another. But you just want to describe like the territories and the different areas of the world. But you don't want to break it down into hexes because it's just not going to be functional. So you want to use maps that are no more than 150 miles wide. So for me, I make each hex 3 miles wide. So then the map will be 50 hexes wide, which is perfect for making maps in different map generators and map applications. And so, yeah, 50 hexes wide, 3 miles per hex, 150 miles wide. That gives you a good overland territory to travel through. You're good to go. Okay, so while we're here, I'm going to take you into Owlbear Rodeo, which is my VTT of choice. And I'm going to set up a map for you that's 120 miles wide. And I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so here we see a map and you'll see some hexes on there. Now the hexes are generated by Owlbear Rodeo, so each hex is three miles wide. How do we know that? Well, I'll go ahead and use the measuring tool. You can't really see, but that says three miles, six miles, nine miles, 12 miles, 15. So you can see that it's going, each hex is three miles wide, right? So right now, if we go all the way across the map, we'll see that it is 192 miles wide. That's not what I want. I actually want a map that's 120 miles across. So all I have to do is change it. So I click on the map and over to the side, I can see that it already says 100 and, oh, so yeah, 156. I want to bring it all the way down to 120. There. So now the map is exactly where I want it. I'll zoom in. And there. Now we're on the map and we've zoomed in. And now across this map should now be 120 miles. Let's go across. Yes, 120 miles, you can see that. Okay, so the map is perfect. And we can see the size of the hexes. Okay, so now we have our map that's 120 miles wide with our hexes, and each hex is three miles wide. Let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so we're back at the presentation, and now this last part is the fun part. Now we get to travel through the hexes. Let me show you how that's done. So first, this is like the innovative part of what I'm doing here, is you want to give each hex a cost from one to six. So let's say you have a cost of two. That's a very fast hex. Easy travel, probably has a good road on it. You can just rip right through it, and it's a very low cost of your travel time to travel through it. But then you could give a hex the cost of six, which means it takes a lot of travel time to go through it. Maybe it's a high mountain with rocky cliffs, and it's just very slow going. So it has a cost of six to get through that hex. So give, keep in mind that each hex just has a cost of how long it would take to travel through it. Okay? Now, now you determine how far the party can travel in one day under normal speed and under normal weather conditions. And that's how many points of travel time you're going to give to the party to travel through the hexes. So let's say the party can travel. You determine that they can walk 15 miles a day. Give them 15 points. If they're on horses and you feel like they can go 24 miles on a flat road, give them 24 points. If you feel like they're a bird flying and you think they could fly 60 miles a day, give them 60 points. Just think about how far they can go with that type of travel that they're doing and give them that many points. Easy, right? Easy. So now, let's say a party has 12 points and they're surrounded by hexes with a cost of three. Now they can travel at normal speed, spending three points per hex. That's the cost of the hex. So they can travel at a normal speed and buy four hexes of movement. That's four hexes times three costs, and that's 12 miles. So they're traveling three miles per hex, four hexes. So they've traveled 12 miles. That's how far they can travel under normal conditions. But they could spend two points per hex. 
This is the innovative part. They don't have to just spend three to get through the hex. They could actually spend two. Okay, let's say they spend two points per hex. They want to move fast. Now they could travel up to 18 miles that day. So that's six hexes because they're spending two points per hex and they have 12 points. So they've bought six hexes. And each hex is three miles. So they've, got, they've traveled 18 miles. So they push themselves to go fast and will have to make an exhaustion check. So that's an example of a party that wants to go fast. Okay, so now let's look at a party that wants to go slow. They could actually spend four points of travel time in a hex that costs three. So they're spending more than that normal cost of three, which means they're gonna travel slower than normal and have advantage on stealth checks. That's one of the advantages you get from spending more points in a hex than what its normal cost is. You're gonna get advantage on stealth and maybe some other things. Think about that in each hex, you can spend different amounts. So in a day, let's say this party may spend four points on the first hex, which means they're going slow, then two points on the second hex, which means they wanna go faster through that hex, and then three points on the next two hexes. So they spend 12 points in all for four hexes. They've traveled their 12 miles, but they started slow, then sped up, and then walked normally. So um, you can see the flexibility in this system. So now let's go back to the map and actually see an example of a party that's moving through the jungle. Let's go. Okay, here we are back at the map that's 120 miles wide. And um, here's where the party is. You can see the leader of the party has the token right there. And the, but they're in the middle of a jungle and in these wilds. So each of the hexes in the jungle and in the wilds is gonna have a cost of four. So it's gonna be slower going because there are no roads and there's gonna be vines and roots and they're gonna to have to walk around trees, figure out things, be careful of insects and snakes in the trees. So it's very slow going and maybe they even have to have a machete to cut their way through. So it's not just like walking down a road, which would have a cost of three, give it a cost of four, which is gonna make it slower going. And then what I do is I'll actually put a hexagon, see me bring this out, I'll put a hexagon around the party. And this hexagon will show a normal day's movement at this cost of four hexes. So as you can see, there's one, two, three hexes that they could move in one day. So that's cost of four, cost of four, cost of four. So that would be 12 points to go three hexes. And they could go nine miles through the jungle. They could go 12 miles if they're on a road, but since it's the jungle, they can only go nine miles because it's slower going, okay? And up here, we'll see the ruins of Kina Moose. And then we'll, down here, we'll see Agaritha's tomb. And we'll see that both of these places is just beyond their reach. And if they want to reach it by the end of the day, they're going to have to hurry. So let's say the group here, and also, I, once they start moving, you'll see that the 12 is here. So I always keep a 12 at the beginning part where they started. And then I'll know that they have 12 points to move. So once they start moving, I can always look back and see where they came from and also how many points they have to spend. So let's say this party wants to go down to the tomb. If they just go normal movement, four, four, now they've spent eight points, another four points. Now they've spent their 12 points. They're still not there. But let's say they wanted to get there by the end of the day. So, so let's say they start out their day at four points and then they think, we better hurry up. I don't think we're gonna make it in time. And then they go a little faster and they go another three, so they've gone seven points. And then they go another three, they've gone 10 points. They have two more points to spend, they go really fast to get there. So they went four, three, three, two. And that's 12 points, so they got there. But because they had to go fast for the last part of the journey, they would have disadvantage on stealth checks. So maybe they, there's a better chance that they're going to have a random encounter with some sort of group that's spotting them because they're more visible, right? Because they're going faster, they're gonna have disadvantage on stealth and they're gonna be easier to spot. So they rushed and there's risks to doing that. Or they could have taken their time and gone slower, make it two days to get there. If they make it two days to get there, they get there with more stealth and they can avoid problems. Okay, I think that shows you a little bit about how to use hexes going through overland travel on these hex maps. This is Wisdom Hunter. Thank you so much and remember, whoever has the most fun wins.